Hello, I thought I'd do a video on some ideas of how to optimize audio for those that might be interested. This is stuff that I do um, quite often, to be fair. Um, and I think it's, you know, good to understand and show um, certain practices that, that, you know, people might find useful. This can't always be applied um, in everything that you do, but in some cases, this can be a, you know, quite a good thing to um, incorporate into your logic. Um, so we can see right now, what I've got is if I move the, the camera, um, there's two actors in the world and um, depending on which one is closest um, out, out of these cubes, um, you know, I'm drawing a, a sphere at the closest one because, you know, the debug, the debug draw sphere, um, is, you know, it's showing me the location of the one that is the closest. So just a quick run through the logic then is on begin play, we uh, get the cubes and then we add them to an array and every tick we are getting our camera location. Um, and then we're using this, um, this node here called find nearest actor, which, um, it checks this whole array. So that array could be nothing it could be a thousand we don't know um and then we return in the um, actor location and then setting the variable for the emitter location and then of course we're setting the location of our emitter to that location and then we're just we're drawing a debug there so this obviously let's just do that again so with a bit of context now if i am not moving as a player if i am not moving my my camera anymore there's no reason to to get the closest cube in this instance. Like we already know which one the closest one is. The only the only time we might need to do this again is if um, if the cube position changes without uh, our camera changing. Um, so you 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 don't you have to kind of build in that contingency. Um, but you know it's quite unlikely in this case that this cube is is going to is going to move in this case. So we can safely say that if our camera location doesn't change then we don't need to ask for the, the closest cube. So <clears throat> the first thing we can do then is we have to consider, uh, is there even a cube in the scene? If I have no cubes in the scene, like this could be a you know generic um, blueprint that the sound designers might want to use. Um, but if there is no cubes in the scene, then we don't even want to do this anyway. So the first thing we can do is we can um, on begin play when we get all of these actors of class we can just say is the array um you know we check is it not empty do a branch yeah and then we do true because if the array is not empty is true i.e there is at least um, an index in here, then we can safely say that we want to run this, um, that we want to run this uh, tick function. So what we want to do then is start with tick enabled, we can turn that off and then we can use this here and we can say to act a tick enabled and then say true. So on big, uh, this blueprint now is not going to tick at all. And then on begin play, it's going to make sure there's at least one cube in the scene. And then if that's true, then we are going to enable tick. So that's the first thing that we can do. And of course, just to show this working now, we know that, you know, there is this, there's two cubes. So our array isn't empty. Um, the next thing we can do is, as I mentioned before, is detect the camera movement. So what we will do now is we will make a function. And let's say camera is moving. So now, uh, let's see. So the thing that we're probing first is this stuff. So Let's just say 
we want to promote this to a variable and we want to call this um, current location. So the current location of the camera is always being set up. And then what we can do is we can say is our current location equals to another location. Um, so let's do, let's do a not, I like to do a not, um, a not Boolean just because in my eyes it makes it a little bit more readable, but, um, you don't have to do this. You can just swap around the true and the false that we're going to do next. Um, so what we do then need is we need another variable. So let's just duplicate this one because it's the same type and let's call this new location. And we are going to set variable from our current location. And then we're going to ask this here. Okay. So now you can see how this is starting to form now. So we're saying is our current location not equals exactly to our new location. If this is true, as in it's not equal, um, we are going to set a new variable location from our current location. And lastly, what we want to do is we want a boolean called camera moving and we're going to set this technically this part isn't needed um but it is nice to uh help help make it more readable and um, we don't technically need to set variables here so in a, an argument is this isn't technically the most efficient way but you know just to, for demonstration purposes um this this helps to visualize what we're doing here and what we then want to do is we want an output. And we are now going to say, we're going to use this Boolean to drive the output Boolean. And we are going to name this camera is moving. So, oh, and then lastly, um, we want this to be a let's do it as a pure function for now so again we're getting our current location we're asking is it not equal exactly to our new location if it is equals exactly we are going to set our camera moving to false if it has changed then we're going to set it to true so then now back in here we can I'm removing and we can branch and now you'll be able to see where we're going with this is now if we click play if I stop moving this camera the logic does not pass this node the flow is blocked um, but we have identified another issue, which is our debugging also is not um, being drawn anymore. Which you could argue that you don't need to, but you know it's always nice to know the, the location even if we're not setting it. So what we can do is just for this demo, we will just copy this here. Um, there's two ways you can do this. You can have in fact, let's do it properly right, shall we? So let's just make a function. And call this or debug, right? So there's two ways you can do this. We can have two instances of this function. We can have one when the camera isn't moving and one at the end here, which we've already got. So now we can always see the location. Um, alternatively, you can just put the debug in front of this um, 
if you want to do it that way, if that's not going to affect your logic. Obviously, in this case, um, we're okay. But, you know, in some instances, it is better to have the debugging um, at the end, because you might need to be doing something like, you know, move something and then show your debug location. <clears throat> so, there we go. Um, another thing you can do, as a little cherry on top, is in our camera moving, we can use a different node called equal here. And this time we're going to say 100, which is quite probably quite a lot. So this, you know, but this will um, be a good case. So you can see now, if I move my camera slightly, we're still technically not moving. Okay. So we're only going to update when the camera position has moved 100 units. So if the camera moved one unit, this this isn't going to be true. We have to move at least 100 units before we allow this to, uh, to change. Um, that might be quite high if you, it's up to finesse essentially. It's, you know, it's up to the user, um, what they feel with this. So there's two ways you can do it with that. Okay, so it's always good to do, um, be clean as you go. So let's give some uh, context to what we're doing here. So current location of the camera. Location set on the position equal to current location and we don't need to do the ball. And um, yeah, just to iterate on what I meant earlier, by the way, was you could just use your output to, from this to drive the output and then technically you don't need to hold these variables. Um, Cause obviously, you know, this is memory technically like holding this stuff in. So, you know, you, you don't need to, to do this step, um, but it, it is nice to uh, to have it if you can afford it cause it, is, it makes it more readable. And then um, this stuff as well, just to go into more detail. Again, you have to use 50, you have to move 50 units uh, to you know, for this to be true, um, you know, if, if your game has like a camera that has a constant, you know, movement on it, like as your character idle, maybe the camera is technically always moving, you know, this can be good for that kind of instance. Um, and, uh, you know, things like WISE will do this as well, like um, when they calculate diffraction paths and stuff, like they will have, if you go into Unreal settings, you can see that they, they do something similar to this as well. So, you know, it's a, it's a common practice to have. Um, and like I said before, you can't always apply um, this behavior. It's just, you know, and in some cases it's more costly to do the behavior than it, you know, to, it's, it can sometimes be more costly to do the check than just setting something. But because we're looping, um, we're finding like the, the, the array, like this could be a side, you know, this, this array could have um, a long length in it. So um, this this is a good case for this, basically, is what I'm trying to say. And yeah, so where was I? So I was getting to sidetrack. So let's just say camera is moving. Um, and for this demonstration, this function is just built into our blueprint. Um, but you can absolutely put uh, camera moving in a macro library, which means that, um, you know, you can call it as a utility in your, in your here and rather than having this exist in your blueprint. And then that way, if you need to use it in other places as well, you can use it as a macro and reference that stuff. Um, yeah, cool. So next time I'll do a video on, um, distance so the further that we 
get from these actors, we are then going to slow our tick rate down essentially. Um, that's my next plan of video. So keep eyes out for that one. <laughs> Cheers.